Hi, this is Mrs. Morita. Welcome to AP Stats, Lesson 4.1B. Our learning target for today is number three. Describe how to select a simple random sample using slips of paper, technology, or a table of random digits. In our last lesson, we talked about some bad sampling strategies like voluntary response and convenient sampling. These were bad because they systematically favored certain outcomes in your population, so we said they were biased. Now we're moving on to some good sampling strategies. The big idea with a good sampling strategy is that it's going to rely on chance. This is going to be the easiest if we just take a simple random sample. This is when each possible sample of a certain size is equally likely to be selected. For learning target number three, we want to describe how to select a simple random sample. We use the sampling strategy so much, we abbreviate it as an SRS, simple random sample. We can use that abbreviation on our AP exams too. The big idea with a simple random sample is that it's random. So to help reduce, we, our goal is to eliminate, but at least help reduce bias, one way we can do this is to involve chance in our sampling. The first strategy we're going to talk about is the most low tech, slips of paper and a hat, or a bowl, or a box, whatever you prefer. In this strategy, if you were asked to describe how to take a simple random sample using slips of paper and a hat, there's three steps. First, we label. So we'd have to write that we would label or write the name of each individual of the population on a piece of paper. Now, if we were looking at our class size, maybe 40 students, not too bad. If we were looking at our school size, over 2,000 students, not a very good method. But theoretically, you put all these names in a hat and then you randomize. So when we put the pieces in a hat, you want to include that you mix them well. If our list that we were writing from was alphabetical and we just put them in as we went, then the bottom of the alphabet would end up at the top of the hat. So you always want to include that you mix these pieces of paper well. Last is selecting your sample. So you would draw out the necessary number of slips for your sample. If you wanted a sample size 10, you'd pull out 10 pieces of paper. But as we start getting into a larger population, your hat's not going to work. So let's move on to some other strategies. Strategies two and three, two being technology, three, a random digit table. Both of these we would write up similarly. So you can go into your technology corner to watch an example of this as well. But the big idea is again, you label, randomize, and select. So here we would label each individual of the population with the same number size. So for example, if we had students and there were 100 of us, then we would need to use three digits to label them because that last student, student 100, would be three digits. So our first student, we would label 001, then 002, and so on. Actually, with 100, you could be kind of smooth and label your first student as 00, and then your last student would be 99. That would be completely acceptable. So keep in mind, when you're labeling with two or three digits, you can use 00 as one of your two digit numbers. Next, we would randomize. So if we're using technology, we would use our random integer generator, and we'll go over an example of that later. But you can see the screenshots down below. If we're using a table of random digits, this is kind of an old school way before we had um, technology so accessible. And we're gonna do one of these together because it is a little weird. Whoops, one more thing, ignoring repeats. So with the ignoring repeats, generally when you're taking a sample, we're going to skip repeats. We don't want the same person selected twice. So if their number came up twice in a random integer generator or a table of random digits, we would just skip it and move on to the next one. There are some situations in sampling and definitely in experimentation where labels will not get skipped. So this isn't all the time, but most of the time when you're taking a simple random sample, you're going to skip repeats. Moving on from the skipping repeats, we also want to talk about this without replacement. So with the hat example, if we were drawing a random sample from a bunch of names in a hat, when you pick out somebody's name, yay, you got selected, you'd set them aside and not pick them again. You don't want the same person selected twice. So with a hat, we would say we sample without replacement. That's the same idea as skipping repeats on a random digit table or a random number generator. 4.1 example four. An alphabetized list of student names is found below. Use the random digit table provided to choose an SRS of five individuals. 
So on your AP exam, you may be given a situation like this and asked to use a random digit table to select an SRS. The three big ideas that I'll make sure that you're including will be labeling, randomizing, and selecting. So first, we're going to label the list of students using two digit numbers. So we'll start at the top and they're alphabetized, so I'll just label 01, 02, 03, and so on. So we'll continue labeling all the way to 23. Did anybody else start writing 010? Just me? Yeah, don't do that. When you're labeling these on an AP exam or a test or homework, the AP graders actually want to see you label these up above. So that work in red is required. Next, we're going to randomize. Oh, make sure to add the numbers you're labeling are 0, 1 to 2, 3. Then we're going to use the random digit table starting at the top left and read two digit numbers at a time. This is our randomization step. And so one way that you can show this to the graders is we're going to partition these numbers every two digits. And so you can see we're just reading like you'd read a book, left to right. And we're looking at two digits at a time. So to complete the explanation down below, we say if a two-digit number corresponds to one of our students, that student will be included in our sample. We skip repeats and stop after five students are selected. So here we go. So the first student that we can select is 19. That's within our range. And then 22, yep, that works. But 39, nope, too big. 50, too big. 34, too big. Oh, 05, hooray. 75, nope. 62, nope, 87, nope, 13, sure, that works. And then we're continuing, nope, 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 nope. All of these numbers are outside of the range that we labeled our students. Nope, nope, uh-oh, we ran out of room. When you run out of the line, you're going to just snake back and start at the next line. So we'll continue. So let's see, 76, nope, nope. No, 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 this is kind of how it goes sometimes. No, a zero one, that works. So the last part to finish up this selecting step is we need to tell the readers which students these actually correspond to. So we'd go through our list and we'd see, let's see. <laughs> so Abney was selected and Smith. So Smith is my 19 and 22. And let's see, number five, Buckley, and Lacey, number 13. So you can circle them up above and then also let, uh, write them down below for your part A. Parts B and C are repeating the same idea, but for part B, they want us to clearly indicate how you could use the hat method to select the SRS. And then part C clearly indicate how you could use technology to select the SRS. To use the hat method, we would write all 23 student names on pieces of paper. Then we would put the slips of paper in a hat and mix them well. Last, we would draw slips of paper out, one at a time, without replacement, until five students are selected. To use technology, we would use our random number generator on our calculator. To use a random number generator on our calculator, we would label the students 1 to 23, similar to how we did in part A with the random digit table. But then we would use randint. We would use 1, 23, 1. So 1 is our lower bound and 23 is our upper bound. Then you just press enter and get random integers. You're going to continue this process, skipping repeats, until you have five students selected. Up above you can use the technology corner to help you work this through, but on the calculator you just hit math, prob, so you just scroll over to prob, and then pick number 5, random. You'd enter your lower, upper, and end value. Now, in our example, we want to enter one for our end value because we want to generate one integer at a time. If not, say you just pick five, you wanted five at a time, that's your sample size, right? If you picked five, there's a chance that you might get a repeat and then that sample wouldn't be able to work. So we're going to do one at a time so we can systematically skip a repeat if it occurs.